Hey beautiful people, uh, Brandon here again. And today, um, so uh, man, I didn't expect to do videos this frequently. It's just, I, I, I man, I, I have so much information in me that I want to get out and it's just like spilling over. And so it's just so nice to have this outlet and to be able to share this, share my experiences with people who actually understand or want to understand or trying to work through the ascension process and um, you know, uh, just, just grow and progress. But, um, you know, um, today I wanted to talk, go into a little bit more details about my experiences with the Lyrans. So it's a really, really cool story and I hope you guys enjoy it. And it all started last summer. So I don't know if you guys, uh, watched my first video where I kind of touched a little bit upon, uh, some of my, my, my life experiences, but last summer, it would have been in June or July, m my uh, my wife and I were really, really into studying ancient uh, writings and ancient texts and understanding um, where we came from, who we are, because we, you know, we were going through the, uh, um, the ascension process and the the awakening process and so all this information was coming through to us and uh, we were just eating it up but we really started to get a fascination with understanding since the ancient text we were studying talked a lot about the ancient history of the earth the true history of the earth not the garbage that modern historians and and you know unawakened archaeologists and anthropologists tell you but the real story about you know uh the, the alien ancestors and you know altering our genetics and that stuff so we really started to get fascinated with extraterrestrials and started uh, trying to connect with them now this is before everything fell apart like, like i was saying uh in in my first video i told you guys how i look through this whole process i've lost everything so this was just right before my wife left me and you know everything just fell apart and my life just kind of went into a downward spiral um so she actually connected with them before i did and i was kind of jealous because i was the one doing all of the work you know and um if you watched my last video you you, you learned that she um just is a little bit more open i guess um and so these beings feel, feel very comfortable talking to her communicating to her but anyway she uh had communicated with them in the astral and just remembered vividly uh you know a man and a woman lyran came to her and they had uh cat you know uh feline type features but uh you know like i told you before um in the brief explanation of my experience with lyrans um you know they stood upright and had arms and legs and fingers and toes and you know just had, had some cat-like features but also a little bit of human type features as well so their faces didn't protrude as much as a felines and when she saw them and the woman had hair um you know that came down and everything and bangs and and all that stuff but they did have ears up here uh, on top of their head instead of on the side and of course like the feline eyes and everything but they're so warm and kind to her and they started communicating with her and just teaching her about themselves and over the process this was going on over the process of uh, maybe a couple of weeks and they finally invited her on their ship and they even told her the destination they would pick her up and they told her that that she, that she would be gone for like 3 to 5 days and and they there was a park like a block or so from our house that they told her that, that they would pick her up at and i guess that's because there's you know it had a big field and i guess the ship they intended to pick her up in was larger and but then she ended up leaving me uh, shortly after that and um it just didn't end up happening and then, you know, uh, I, I, of course, went through all the grieving and everything of all of that. And in that process is where I uh, connected with them and in the astral. But when I saw them, it was a little bit different. She described them in these kind of these really cool space suits. And they had 
these glasses and she told me what the glasses did but but I can't remember and but the suits would basically keep their body at like a perfect temperature no matter where they were and kind of it was like a bio suit type of thing that would yeah like fit their bodies perfectly keep them per at a perfect temperature at all times um, and when I saw them it was very different I met with it was six or seven of them and they were there when I saw them their their heads and faces were very feline like like um the lead, the one who seemed to be a leader and they were very regal they even wore like regal clothing and some were dressed like warriors and the one that seemed to be kind of their leader uh had a uh, that's why I keep this here um he had a uh a, um, that just reminds me of him because just I love them so much. They just exuded so much love and were so hospitable to, more, to me. But he looked his his head looked like a, a lion, but his body was human and he dr was vest, dressed very regal like royalty. But the thing that was interesting is that when I spoke to them, they were so tall that I felt like they were up on a stage. So they stood. So they were different heights, but. Most of them stood between 12 and 15 feet tall, so very tall. And then there was some with like, uh, one with like a bobcat head, one with like a jaguar head, one with like a lynx head. So they all, you know, uh, had different types of cat heads. But like I said, when I saw them, they were very feline. When 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 my wife uh, saw them, they were like a combination of human and, and feline. Um, but they were so kind like i i just I, I almost get emotional when i talk about them and the way that they made me feel and just the love that they that they gave me and extended towards me and their gratitude for reaching out to them and uh just their hospitality and there's actually one female who was about six and a half feet tall so she was significantly smaller than the rest and she actually had more of the human type features too so i wonder if she was the same female that uh my wife had seen uh with that male and her experiences with them but the thing the the reason i keep that on the wall there is to remind me of them because of just how much love i have for them and just how much love they have for us and one thing that they want us to know is that any of us, so you don't, I'm not special, I'm not anybody, um, you know, any more important or any, any, you know, on a grander path than anybody else. I just reached out and th and that's all they're asking us to do because they will help us. Um, and if you know much of their history, they, they lost their world to the reptilians. They won that war, but they lost, they lost their planet uh, to, when they're in a war with the reptilians who were actually, you know, as most of you probably know, very involved in the th three-dimensional politics and government and religions and businesses of this of this world. So they basically control this world. Um, and so the Lyrans are actually here to help us overcome, you know, not, not only that, not, not only help us uh, overcome the, the evils and the darknesses. Um, sorry. Of, of the three-dimensional world, but also to help us through our awakening and through our ascension process as well. So, but they just want us to know that all we have to do is, is you know, want to connect to them and try to connect with, with them and uh, they'll connect with us. So, you know, if you're interested in meeting them or connecting with them, you just do it through your meditations um, and, um, you know, focus on them. Uh, one sec, sorry. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Someone's messaging me while I'm trying to do this with you guys. Um, but anyway, um, so uh, anybody can reach out to them and connect with them. 
but yeah, just, just, just meditate upon them, think about them, extend your love towards them. Obviously beings of, of these dimensions and, uh, they communicate telepathically. And so they hear you whenever you are trying to connect with them, they're listening and they're watching and they're just, sometimes it'll take a little bit longer. Like it did for me. Uh, like they came to, to my ex-wife or my, my, my separated wife, um, pretty easily but for me it took a lot of effort and a lot of focus and energy and work to get them to respond to me but I, I think they're just kind of testing me um because i'm a little bit more stubborn <laughs> than her i guess but anyway um yeah so i just wanted to share that experience with you guys and i hope that that's beneficial for you and um I'll, i'm excited to share more information with you like i said it's just kind of flooding over now um just want to get some of these experiences out and to you guys and to you know let people know what's happened and happening with me through my process there's a lot more to come some really interesting things have happened to me uh <laughs> and i'll do some more videos about them but i, I don't want to get these, these videos to be too long and too extensive so i'll just let uh, cut this one off here and hope you guys enjoyed it and comment or let me know if you've had any similar experiences you've got you guys have had some awesome experiences and shared some awesome things with me as a matter of fact the reason i did this video is because of a comment someone made about the lyrens and and uh it just reminded me and i you know told that person how much love i have for the lyrens and how grateful i am for them so um anyway uh, let me know if you guys enjoyed this and uh have a wonderful day and uh we'll talk to you soon Love and light. Bye.